Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Welcome back. I'm Steve. And I'm Scott. And together, we are Backyard Musings, broadcasting live Apple Valley, California. Science and Technology Channel. And we got a couple of wild ones for you today. What you see on your screen is one of thousands of holes in a 500 square mile radius area, bottom of the ocean, off the coast of California. That's what you're looking at right now. A couple divers are down there. More mysterious than Bigfoot. Hiding beneath the waves off the central coast of California, where Bigfoot is known to reside, and along the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is a phenomenon that has baffled everyone. These holes have puzzled researchers for decades, with many speculations about where they came from and what caused them. Would you like to know more if this mystery will ever be solved? And these are big holes. Yeah. These are not just... No, they're not little guys. Yeah, they're not post holes. These, mm -hmm. are, these are gigantic. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're big. Okay. Off the central coast of California, near near Big Sur, scientists have uncovered a vast field of mysterious seafloor holes, known as pockmarks, spanning an area roughly the size of Los Angeles, about 500 miles square miles. Have you been to Big Sur? Uh, Beautiful. I have been there when I was when I was a young kid. But beautiful. Yeah, not, I don't remember that. Be much, if, but, if, but if you're out in I know California, the coast is beautiful. There. You got to see Big Sur. You got to see Yosemite. You got to see La Brea yeah, Park yeah, Bri 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 and Bristlecone, right? Yeah, Bristlecone. Um, I have not been there. I've been by the, the, the road to there, but not La Brea yet. Um, but go. I've been to Yosemite a couple times. You know what? It, it I think beautiful. we're going to go. We'll, we'll, we'll get you and your wife and my wife. and We'll go. Go where? La Brea. Oh. Come on. We'll okay. take the electric vehicle. What are you going to do with your kid? We'll take him, too. Oh, we'll okay. have you watch him. <laughs> Okay. All right. For years, researchers have believed these formations were caused by methane gas bubbling up from beneath the seabed. No. But recent high-resolution mapping and sediment analysis have upended that theory. Okay. Sediment analysis on the bottom of the ocean. Okay. When I think of sediment, I think of the slope of a hill, erosion, you know, rain makes the hill erode, you know, from water trickling down. Okay. It's the bottom of the ocean, man. All right. These features averaging 36 feet in diameter and three feet deep. Now, is that weird? Yep. It's like a crater. Like a I've, like a where a grenade has gone off or, or a rocket is. Landed. I've got a theory. I've got a theory for that, and I'll share it at the end. Okay. We're found alongside larger inactive pockmarks. What is an inactive pockmark? Spanning up to 574 feet across. That's big. These 15,000 small round holes were dubbed micro depressions, and they often contain human debris like trash and rocks. Well, low, the low place on the which is weird. It's going to go. The trash is going to float down to the low place. I guess, but there, but there, there's got to be current, right? So are they just blowing in there, and they're just not able to blow out? But they're not able to blow out. Yeah. Okay. M B A R I deployed uh, autonomous underwater vehicles, UAVs, and the remotely operated vehicle, ROV, Doc Ricketts, to study these formations. Not making this up, man. Yeah. These robots have advanced sensors and cameras, oh. enabling them to create detailed three-dimensional maps and photo mosaics of underwater landscapes. Yeah. These tools captured seafloor maps at one-foot resolution, and collected 540 sediment cores, mm -hmm. revealing layers of sand deposited by ancient sediment flows. How do we know they're ancient? You know, I, carbon dating. I, you know, I, I don't, don't know. know either. I, don't know. I mean, like Zealandia, you know, the water, the water, you know, rose up over Zealandia, so it had to be low at some point. I don't know. Uh, quote. We collected a massive amount of data, allowing us to make a surprising link between pockmarks and sediment gravity flows, said Mbari. Senior research te technician Eve Lunston. Okay, let's go to the next slide here. Next slide. Okay. So that that's a weird picture right there. Yeah, let's let's take a look at that. Those so, almost look like uh, some kind of acne. A rash or acne. Yeah, yeah. or pimples like yeah, I yeah. had on my nose this morning, but my right. wife picked them. Yeah, different colors. Yeah, interesting. Probably, I wonder if that's the depth, different uh, color size. Yeah, huh. yeah, the yeah. circumference. Yeah, maybe. So. Huh. Uh, this field is located off the coast of Big Sur, Big Sur, like we were talking about in California, and is one of North America's largest and most intriguing seafloor features. 
This field spans about 500 square miles and has over 5,200 perfectly round depressions. For years, scientists believe these pockmarks resulted from methane gas bubbling up from beneath the seabed, raising concerns about the area's stability for potential offshore wind farm development. So they said, just put them out there. Perfectly round. Yeah, weird. It's okay, like a, I'm it's just like a SEMA dome. Yeah, I'm so I'm gonna throw out my 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 Only the, hypothesis. It's, like a, it's a it's a inverted SEMA dome. Oh interesting. So I'm I'm gonna throw out my hypothesis. Okay, okay, here we go. Have you ever watched Total Recall? No. It was about oh, you mean, Mount Mars. Is it? Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh yeah, I remember yeah. The, I remember the movie, but about no, I Mars, didn't see it. Mars and the administrator of Mars was an evil guy and he was trying to hide something, and the people who weren't getting enough air. They were pissed because they weren't getting air and they started to being deformed, born deformed. And so Arnold was helping to uncover this. What it was, was an ancient alien thing, almost like a, like a nuclear reactor rods, rods that were really wide. And when activated, you put your hand into the thing, the rods went down into the snow, melted the snow, created the atmosphere. Oh. Uh -huh. That's what this is. You think so? That's where, I, they put, I, uh, yeah, that's where they put the rods. Those are big rods. Uh, yeah, I mean, massive alien, an alien thing landed here. Billion. You don't believe okay, it, folks? Do you? you don't Let believe us know. it? Do you? I'm not saying either way. I, I saw the look. Let on us your know. Face. Let us know the comments. <sighs> I'm losing my poker face over that one. So <laughs> is it my turn? Or Quote: yours? We were a unable to determine exactly how these pock marks were initially formed, but with Embari's advanced underwater technology, we've gained new insight into how these features have persisted on the seafloor for hundreds of thousands of years. Now, how do we know that? Again, this is according to Carbon dating, Lundston. Yes, yeah. I don't know. Carbon dating? For a long time, researchers have speculated that these holes are due to methane gas bubbling below the surface. But thanks to cutting edge technology, no traces of methane were found. No gas vents, chemical synthetic organisms, or geochemical signatures are typically linked to fluid expulsion. Instead, the analysis of sediment layers showed rhythmic patterns of coarse grain deposits and underwater avalanches triggered by seismic activity or slope collapses. These avalanches are known as sediment gravity flows and have maintained these features for over 280,000 years. Oh, man, this is, they're stretching know. it, man. Yeah, they're, they're, they're stretching it. It's just a long. It's a long time. So, so here they're showing the bottom. They're showing some debris, fish, right? Yeah, Doesn't you can see like bones. Fish. Yes, fish and starfish. You can see bones over here. Yeah, you can see pop bottle. You know, like Mountain Dew or Squirt. Yeah, another fish Not over mine. here. But <laughs> yeah, no, that's. Yeah, I can. And I mean, the deeper these things are, I could see where they would collect more trash. Yeah, I mean, the lowest point is going to collect the trash. Mm -hmm. You've gone to any work site, any job site, the lowest point has trash filled in it. This field was filled with large holes as well as smaller micro depressions that are much younger features, likely formed by recent erosional processes. These small pits are filled with objects like rocks, kelp holdfast, animal bones, and most commonly human trash. Quote, we were surprised by the discovery of the existence of the micro depressions and also the abundance of them, said Lunston. We didn't know they were there, so their existence was the biggest surprise. The Navy, they drop their trash, you know, wherever they go. I wonder if it's the Navy. Uh, that other do boats this. do too. That. <laughs> yeah. Do that as well. So, yeah. The prevailing theory suggests that when objects settle on the soft, silty sea fo floor, they attract marine life whose activity stirs up and erodes the sediment, gradually carving out these distinctive depressions. Okay. Wait a second. Wait a second. The, the fish's activity. So, their tails. Well, Come on, man. You know, there are some fish. Uh, I don't know if there's fish in this area that do this, but there are some fish that that's how they make their their little nests or whatever, where they lay the their little eggs. holes that they... Yeah, they wait, but this would have to be an awful big fish. It'd be a coordinated great. effort, too. Yeah, unless it's done, like you say, in a group effort, but I, I don't know. Coordinated schools of fish eroding these... No, no. Yeah, I, I, that's, that's a reach, I think. Uh, quote, a hypothesis is that uh, objects landing on the seafloor produce a habitat for fish, said Paul. Quote again, their activities stir up the soft, fine grain sediment, 
which slowly, slowly drifts away in the current and progressively ex, um, excavate and de the depressions. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. It would have to be a very, know. very large school of fish to do that. And they would yeah. have to be diligent about it. You'd think that they, but you know, that's how, that's how some of those animals are They're, I mean, it's like salmon, right? What I mean, they're, they're, all they're going, fascinating. Yeah, going up the river. Yeah. They, they, they come down the river and then they go back the river to lay eggs and die, right? They yeah. die when they do they that. They die, so, yeah. Yeah. They're so, exhausted. Interesting. Interesting. So this this uh, sc screenshot right here shows the pock marks. Then it shows where they're going to put a potential wind farm. And you look at the scale; it's like forty kilometers off the coast. Yeah, and that's a beautiful area. I'm surprised that they're going to be allowed to do this. Morro Bay is, it, in my opinion, is a lot more prettier than Kenny Bun Bunkport, Maine. And I know the 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 people that were there didn't want those um, that wind farm there. They didn't want Ruin the aesthetics, right? Yeah, and Morro Bay is it's it's beautiful. San, San Simeon, Simeon, that's where beautiful. The is. Yeah, that's where the Hearst Castle is, right? Yeah, beautiful. So that, that whole that whole coastline. Again, that's we we up, have man. Nimrods. We have Nimrods running the probably the one of the most, if not the most, beautiful state in in uh, in the Union. So, but we won't talk about that. But anyway. My ears. I think it's yours. Okay. Understanding the stability and origins of these seafloor features is crucial for proposed offshore wind farms in the region. If the holes were caused by active gas seepage, they could pose risks to turbine foundations. Thankfully, so I guess it's shallow enough to put a foundation down there. You know, they got uh, they've got oil rigs off the coast, Santa Barbara. I don't know if they're using them anymore, but they used to have oil rigs out there. Thankfully, the discovery that ancient sediment gravity flows maintain these features suggests the seafloor has remained structurally quiet for millennia. Yeah, that's convenient, right? Quote again, expanding renewable energy is critical to achieving the dramatic cuts in carbon dioxide emissions needed to prevent further irreversible climate change. Here we go. Oh I knew that had oh to go. Oh, my gosh. Uh, that's noted by Mbari president and CEO Chris Sholin. So now we, we, we know... Uh, the actual reason this is this hypothesis is being climate, climate change. change and the wind turbines. Yeah, and this has got to be you. Probably. Much like Bigfoot, no matter the amount of research that has gone into understanding these depressions on the seafloor, they are still one of the biggest mysteries that baffle researchers to this day. For instance, while sediment gravity flows have been identified as the primary force shaping the large pockmarks, these events, precise triggers, and frequency over geological time remain unclear. Researchers are also intrigued by the striking regular spacing of both large and small holes, hence that little machine that led up, okay, which hints at underlying patterns in ocean currents, sediment composition, or even subtle tectonic influences. Yeah, that's... I mean, the fact that the, the, the holes are, are perfectly round or yeah, close to perfectly that's, round. That's not a quinky. Certain date. depths. I mean, that's, yeah, that's pretty amazing. Uh, about 30% of micro depressions contain human garbage, while others house natural debris like bones. These objects provide micro inhabitants for marine life, which stir up sediment and may contribute to the formation of the holes. Quote, the presence of these objects provides micro habitats for fish that were currently or commonly observed in ROV dives, stirring up the fine grain sediment, which is then carried away by sea bottom currents, further contributing to carving out the eroded holes left behind. One of the researchers wrote. So. Yeah, but come on. I mean, how long have we been doing this? That doesn't erode, you know, create all of these. I mean, yeah. it's almost on, like the man. water has a, you know, is it like a, Oh, what do they call that? Uh, Oh my gosh! What do they call that when the water turns? The turn of the whirlpool. Down. whirlpool. Whirlpool, yeah, whirlpool. Oh yeah, whirlpool. Maybe that's what causes that's it. That's a that's and a. They, and we have a lot of that on the California huh. coast. A huh. lot of that. Major expeditions like those done by the EV Nautilus and supported by NOAA, the National Organization of Atmosphere and something um, exploration, are now targeting deep sea habitats around the globe. From the Mariana Islands to the Aleutian Arc, it's with a big area. yeah, with live stream dives and real time data collection, as technological advancements become more accessible and exhibitions intensify, the coming years 
are sure to bring a ton of new discoveries, helping researchers better understand the world below the waves. Fascinating stuff. So let, I want you let us know what you think about this story. Yeah, if you're familiar with these things. Bigfoot and aliens with their rods coming down to create the atmosphere. I, I've lived in California my whole entire life, and I've never heard of this. So, I know. I'm, I've never heard. This is captured my... That's why. I, yeah, I, no, it's fascinating. That's why I told the producers to put this. Write on. it up. Put it to print. All right, all right, folks. Take care, everyone. We we'll look forward you. to hearing from you.